Uh, my guest today is Ben from Prestazon. Now, these guys optimize Amazon pay-per-click campaigns all day long with a little help from their software. And we talk about step-by-step -step of what you should do to optimize your Amazon pay-per-click campaign. So you may have ads running, uh, but how do you get the most uh, sales and profit out of them? Ben comes thoroughly prepared with a slide deck and offers many new insights that uh, you know most people have not considered before uh, that could be a game changer in terms of your sales from ads on Amazon. So uh, great discussion. Uh, please enjoy this one with Ben from Prestazon. We're, we're good. We're on, I think. Let me, let me see. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us, Ben. I, I think um, I'm super excited for this because everyone wants to know more about Amazon PPC. Um, what, what did you want to talk about today? I mean, I, I can go through all of Amazon PPC optimization. Uh, it, it is one of the hottest topics right now. Uh, Everybody is spending a lot of money on PPC and they want to spend their money right. So we can go from the beginning, uh, tell, talk a little bit about what we do and why, you know, why I like our approach and then go into like whether if you're just starting PPC or if you're like in the middle and you have an account set up already, where, you know, whatever you want to go. Sweet. Yeah, I, I think that's sort of what we were talking about beforehand is that we we're going to cover PPC optimization. So maybe we're assuming that the person has some campaigns running, but they're slow or they're not doing super well, sort of like that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I, yeah, I, I, um, I would like to know more as, as well. Maybe just uh, explain a little bit about um, yourself and Presses On and what you guys are doing. Yeah, sure. Uh, so about a year and a half ago, we, we started Presses On, and uh, that's after some consulting that we did for Amazon PPC clients. <clears throat> and we're like, man, the tools that are available for managing these PPC accounts are just not good enough. And so we, we've all had, we have long software backgrounds. And so we said, hey, we can probably do this better. And so we built presses on, and it's just a really fast way to look at your account and see what's going on, and then make changes that are the most important changes that you can make. Everything in our software is focused on saving you time so that you can find the exact things that you should do uh, first to get the most performance out of it. Hmm. Because a lot of accounts have you know, tens of thousands of keywords. <clears throat> and most of the time, most of those keywords don't matter. So you need to be focusing on you know, the 80% of where your spend is and the 80% of where your sales are. And then the rest can come later, but you, know, you really need to start by optimizing those, those bits. Right. Right, sort of Pareto distribution type thing. Yeah. Okay, okay, and um, so in in that time, I guess, uh, are, how different is the is this like is this software from if you were to run it manually? Like you you set up an automatic yourself, you set up some manual stuff, and you run them, and then you sort of like prune the keywords. Um, how, how's it different from from that? Well, there are two main two main things. One is analytics. Uh, the analytics that you get from Amazon are like really top level, they don't like plot anything. So it's hard to see like how things are changing over time. <clears throat> and we actually get more detailed data through the API than you can get through Seller Central. Right. Uh, and so we can display that in a lot of different ways. And it makes it a lot easier than, you know, downloading these CSVs and putting them in Excel and then doing all this stuff, you know, stuff that would take me a couple hours to do, uh, maybe like a year and a half ago, now it takes me like 20 minutes. And so that's a really big difference. The other difference is that we have automation, which right now automates bid management, which is a very tricky thing because especially if you don't have the, the time series data, it's hard to understand where, uh, where you should take your bid next. So we, we do that. We pull in new data every day, and then we look, you know, how, how's this performance since the last time you changed your bid? Uh, which is also something that we keep track of that Amazon doesn't keep track of. And then we say, okay, over the last week, since you changed your bid from 50 cents to a dollar, it performed like this. And we suggest changing it back down to like 75 cents or like maybe increasing it further. And we can do this on a keyword by keyword level for every day, which is just super, super hard to do if you do it manually. Hmm. Okay, okay. All right, so yeah, bringing technology to bear on, on the system, that's pretty yeah. good. And um, 
Okay, so 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 yeah, I mean, let's uh, let's talk optimization because this is really this is really cool. Um, so so say for example, I'm I'm a seller. I have whatever product um, mm. we're we're using, <clears throat> um, uh, like a, a, assume maybe a private label seller. So they're not reselling anyone's mm. product. It's not an arbitrage thing. It's uh, it's something that they private labeled, and uh, they've they've launched um, maybe a, a, an automatic campaign just to get some get some early data in and see what's working, and maybe they yeah. have a few manual ones. What um, what's what's the first step in terms of um, uh, optimizing uh, the ads? Well, so the first thing to realize is that there's a different strategy for every account. Um, okay. There's I think there's there's not a one size fits all thing. So what you should do is look for different tools that might work like for your specific account. <clears throat> so there are a couple of situations. One is like um, you know, maybe there's a ton of ton of different search terms, not and the spend is like really distributed across all those search terms. Yep. Or maybe like the CPC is really high. Uh, or maybe they're not getting any impressions. You know, these are all different things. So I'll give you give a couple different strategies for where you should go uh, for a bunch of different situations. Yeah, sure. Um, the one really important thing is to make sure that you're starting off with the right bid. So if you have, let me uh, share a little share a slide that I have. All right, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. So, guys, this, this is 2018. Ben is the first one ever to break the sound barrier, <laughs> the, sli the slide barrier. So, so we are recording this, and he's doing a screen share, which is super cool. So check this out. Um, Let's see if that – yeah, let me present this. Okay, cool. So um, <laughs> this is super basic math, and it can really help for making sure that you start your bids right. Okay. Because you can start your bids really low and then move up. Uh, and that, you know, uh, sorry. you can, uh, and that, that can get you to a good bid. Uh, you can also start your bids really high and then bring them down. And that, that's a faster way to get to a good bid. But if you can just start really close to where they should be, uh, in the end, then that's, that's going to help you for sure. So, uh, uh, CPC divided by conversion rate divided by price equals a cost. So this is because, uh, you know, your, your, your ACOS, uh, like if you have a 10% conversion with 50 cents, then you're expecting to pay, you know, for 10 clicks before you get a conversion. So that's $5 and then $5 divided by 30 is 17%. So, uh, this is a pretty good way to see kind of where your ballpark ACOS is going to be for different things. So if you're selling, you know, if you put in your different prices and what you expect your conversion rate to be, and you know, guess your CPC for your market. You can see like these numbers can vary pretty wildly. And this last one, you know, I've seen this before. You know, this happens, and people are like, "Oh, I can't get my A cost down to thirty percent." Like, okay, well, you know, you're in a super competitive market where you're paying two dollars a click, and people are choosing between a ton of different products. So maybe you have a five percent conversion rate. Right. And you're only selling the thing for fifteen dollars. Right, right. Like, that's going to result in a very, very high A cost. Right. So, so like, just having realistic expectations when you go in, like some products you might not want to advertise, some you might want to put all of your money into. And so if we flip this around, uh, conversion rate times price times A cost equals CPC. So if you say, okay, well, my organic conversion is around 10% and I'm selling this thing for 30 bucks and I want a 30% A cost, then I need to have a 90 cent average CPC. And so then you can start your bids around 90 cents and, uh, and you'll be pretty close to where you want to be. Uh, right. So you can use this to predict, um, what a, a decent bid would be not too high, not too low. Um, yeah, right, right, right. Okay. That's interesting. So, so, so it doesn't mean that you're going to get super high volume at that CPC, Yeah. but at least you're going to be, if your conversion rate was estimate was pretty close, then you'll probably be close to your target A cost. And so what's, um, I mean, going, this is really interesting and it's really cool that you break this down uh, this way. Um, what's, um, just looking at conversion first, maybe we go left to right. Like what's, um, what's a reasonable conversion rate to expect? Um, 
I know it, it definitely varies by category and based on competition, but like if uh, I, I heard that Amazon's conversion rate like base is around 10%. I don't know if that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on your product and how many reviews you have and what the star rating is. Um, <clears throat> you know, the best way to do this is if you're starting up PPC, you probably have some, you've probably sold for at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you haven't, then you just have to kind of guess, and maybe 10% is a good guess. Uh, but go into your business reports in Seller Central and look at your unit session percentage. Right. And that, that'll tell you what your organic conversion rate is or your overall conversion rate. Uh, and that's a good place to start for PPC. Yeah. Um, it can really vary. Like if somebody's searching for your brand, your, your search term conversion rate could be as high as like 60%. Right. But if somebody's searching on like a tangentially related thing, your conversion rate rate might be really low compared to organic. But you know, starting at your organic rate is not a bad bet. Okay, okay, that's that's a good one. Um, okay, so that's conversion price is pretty self-explanatory. Have have you seen um, essentially c conversions from pay-per-click uh, move in in correlation with price, um, a, a, as one might think, like? Uh, it, 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 would you recommend, say, if you just want to get sales rolling for, for ranking purposes, for example, um, lowering your price and then running a bunch of pay-per-click ads to the listing, or would you keep your price stable? Or I would experiment. I mean, yeah. this is one of those things where there's no optimum for every account. Uh, pricing is a really, you know, it's a very particular thing. Yeah. You know, it's really dependent on your competition and your reviews and the market and the season and so <clears throat> i would just always be experimenting with pricing definitely keep an eye on how how that influences your ppc i've i've definitely had success launching products uh where i have a super low uh price and then just spend a ton of money on uh, ppc and that can really bump you up the rankings that's what i'm thinking quick. right yeah like yeah. you know uh, yeah yeah makes sense intuitively yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, right. ACOS. Right. ACOS fluctuates so wildly depending on the other factors. It's it's hard to get a baseline for it. Um, yeah. So I, this isn't. I, I guess I should have made this target a cost. So like, you're. This is what you want it to be. So if you say, you know, maybe your your break even margin is like thirty uh, percent, and you're like, I don't want to spend more than thirty cents or thirty right. percent. Uh, a cost, then you need to have a maximum CPC of 90 cents if you have a 10% conversion. Yeah. So this this is saying that you know you definitely shouldn't be paying two dollars a click because that's probably not going to get you into your right. Right. Uh, a it's going to end you. Yeah. Uh, but if you were paying 50 cents a click, then maybe your a cost is lower, and that's great. Right. And, and for so, so this equation. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was just going to point out to people. Um, so, a advertising cost of sale um, does not take into account the, the your, your actual product costs. Um, so, you could still have a decent advertising cost of sale, and the ads could still be uh, not profitable. You could still be losing money on it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> just to yeah, state the totally. obvious, one hundred percent ACOS is not break even. It's uh, you're losing money at that point. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. sorry, Ben. Just wanted to point that out. Totally. And that's a good point. And, you know, this is where it comes down to there's a different strategy for every account. Like if you're launching a product into a competitive market, you need to expect uh, right. that you're going to have a very high a cost. Right, I mean, right. the this, you know, this last one, uh, this last slide, you know, <laughs> if you're launching something and you've got like, you know, you don't have any reviews, so your conversion rate's low. Yeah. And maybe you normally sell it for thirty dollars, but because you want to go up the rankings, you're selling for fifteen. Right. And you're like bidding super high because you really <laughs> just want the traffic. Yeah. Like, three hundred percent ACOS is not out of the question. Like that's what you're gonna get. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now it's not gonna doesn't have to be like that forever. You know, you can increase your price, get more reviews, reduce your CPC, and then all of a sudden now it's in line. It's more like forty percent, but you know, for a while, you might see really high numbers. Right. Uh, and, and, yeah, and I guess as long as you're doing it consciously and as part of an overall launch strategy, um, yeah. it's not bad. You will be losing money. I, I don't know. Th this is more of a top-level business, like, strategic question, but do, do you think do you think yeah. that's necessary, or have you seen products 
succeed with like healthy ACOS out the gate? Um, you know, what what percent of cam you know products do you think would benefit from from like a more aggressive launch like that with a deliberately you know off the charts ACOS like 100 percent plus? Yeah, you know, I think it really depends on the rest of your launch strategy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're only relying on Amazon PPC to launch your product, then you're probably going to have to spend a lot of money. Right. Uh, but if you have other things like, you know, maybe you're doing giveaways or maybe it's like the best is if you have an established product line and you have off Amazon sales and then you can like, you know, use some of that volume to like, you know, divert it to Amazon. Right. Yeah, uh, you yeah. can launch to existing email lists. Like there are tons of cool things you can do to launch a product and Amazon PPC is one of them. I don't think like it's pretty easy because you can just set it up and let it run and you pay Amazon money and it just works. Yeah. But um, the, it, it can get very expensive. So I, I would encourage people to like have a mix of launch strategies and like different things work for different products. So it, it's, it's good to try a bunch of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's, that's good advice. Um, well, yeah, the, the, the advice there is certainly to look at your overall strategy and see what percentage of, of your, launch sales would be coming from pay-per-click. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a really good breakdown, by the way. I've never seen it presented like this. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, it, uh, you know, some really simple math can just put you ahead of your competition. Yeah, it's, no, for sure. You know, getting targeting costs and uh, getting some, you know, estimates of CPC, like, it's a great place to start, if, especially if you've never done advertising before yeah. and you really have no clue what is, like, the going rate for a click. Uh, this is a really helpful thing to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So let me, I'm going to turn off my screen, go back to my camera. So here are some other, some other good stuff. Uh, once you have the right CPC, uh, that's a good place to start your, your automatic campaign. Mm. Um, I would suggest starting a little bit higher than whatever that equation put out because you want to include stuff that it has that cost per click. And if you, if you have your bid set at 90 cents and that's your target, then you're going to get most of your traffic coming from stuff that's like 60 cents per click. So if you set it to like a buck 10 or a buck 20, mm -hmm. then, <clears throat> then you'll include a lot of 90 cent clicks. Right. And then those are going to be the ones that you bring over to, you know, your, your manual campaigns. Okay. Okay. Good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So, so set, um, leave a little buffer room, perhaps like, uh, set your max yeah. cost per click a little bit higher than what you'd expect the clicker to be. Yeah. Okay. Good. Cause you, you know, you, you're entered into a bunch of auctions. So like the overall way, uh, Amazon's pay-per-click system works is they pick one of your keywords, they enter it into an auction with your bid and they bring in some like relevance data and they pick a winner. And if you win, you get that impression. And if somebody clicks, then you pay. And so not every auction is at your bid. You know, you might only end up paying like half of your bid or like 10% of your bid or hundred percent of your bid somewhere in there. <clears throat> and you get these distributions and your average cost per click will all, almost always be lower than your bid yep. unless you have like bid plus turned on, but that's, that's a different thing. But, um, what you want to do is get exposure to all of like this whole distribution of, of clicks. And if you have your bid at like a dollar and you're seeing that your average cost per click is like 85 cents or 90 cents or 95 cents, then that means that almost all of the auctions that you're getting entered into are right at your bid. Hmm. And there's probably a ton of volume above your bid. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 You're, you're missing out on a, a, the, I don't know, whatever it is, the last third or something of the distribution. Yeah. Right. And, or maybe like that's where the bulk of it is. Like, yeah. especially if you were to get into, you know, supplements or something. Yeah. I, oh, man. I pay the people that yeah. <laughs> advertise the humans. That's, that's challenging. Yeah. Uh, but like those cost per clicks can be like $4. So yeah. if you, if you um, are bidding a buck, you might get some traffic, but like most of it's above you. Right. But if you see that your bid is at a dollar and your average CPC is at like 50 cents, there's probably not a whole lot of stuff. There's probably not a whole lot of volume above it. 
So you want to just kind of like get the lay of the land, see, the, see what this distribution looks like. Um, you're going to get exposed to different search terms at different cost per clicks. Mm. And so you want to include all of those search terms. And so you, ha you know like how things convert across the whole range of search terms for your product. Right. I, I wanted to ask you actually, because you mentioned um, you gave a really clear explanation of how the auction works. Um, and, and you mentioned relevance. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't publicly disclose the, the exact uh, algorithm. But um, right. do, do you? How do you feel like um, relevance is weighing against um, uh, max uh, cost per click these days? Well, that's a tough question. Yeah, Amazon gives us so little insight into how they bring that into the auction. Yeah, um, I think the the biggest thing is. Uh, how much traffic they give you. So it, it's really whether or not you get entered into the auction at all. Okay. And so it's really important to, you know, have the right category um, and have a bid that's at least in the right ballpark for that category. Right. And then you can start getting traffic and you can start optimizing from there. Okay. But if, you know, Amazon's not going to show you for things that they don't think you're relevant for because obviously they want people to click on these ads. So even if you bid $5, sometimes you won't get many impressions because they don't think you're relevant. Uh, largely based on category, you're saying? Or is that like, um, does yeah, listing content a, also come into play? Uh, keywords? Something yeah, like I mean, all of the above. Like, yeah. it's, I, I'd imagine it's pretty similar to what they use for organic rankings. So if right. somebody searches on that, like, you know, you need to be relevant to be high in the organic rankings. You know, people need to be buying because they searched on your on that specific term, right, right. and that uh, that happens because of your category. That happens because of uh, what's in your description and your your title, and it probably happens based on what's in the reviews too. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's this whole whole group of things. But I'd say that if you're you know if you're not getting any impressions or you're getting way fewer impressions than you would expect, you might want to take a look at your listing. That, yeah, that, that's definitely a good troubleshooting point. Because if you're if you're max um, cost per click or li like you're you're bidding decently well, you know, um, but still no impressions, it might be a relevance thing. Okay, yeah, that, mm -hmm. th that's all I wanted to ask about that. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Cool. So now, like you've got your just kind of looking at my notes here. <clears throat> so now you've you've got your auto campaign running okay. with a bid that is close to your, your target CPC. Yep. Uh, the, the next thing to do is like really take a look at what search terms are getting exposure. Okay. So um, people focus a lot on keywords, uh, but Amazon is all about search terms. Like you need to have a good way to look at your search terms and how each search term is performing because keywords are just like buckets uh, buckets for search terms. And I, I have a slide for this, which yeah. I'll share now. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be awesome if you could explain the distinction there because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in this in this game as much, so I, I don't know what the difference is. Cool, yeah, definitely. All right, so <clears throat> there, there are keywords in search terms. Yeah. And a keyword is the thing that you bid on. So when you set up a manual campaign, you enter in the keywords that you want to bid on and you enter in the match type for each keyword yep. and a bid for each keyword. Yep. Or you can just use your default bid, but like each keyword has to have a bid. Each keyword can get exposure to a lot of different search terms. So in this case, we're bidding on the keyword top hat because we sell top hats. Um, people might be searching on top hat, black top hat, men's top hat, black men's top hat, all these different things. And because you selected broad, Amazon's going to show you for any of these things with this keyword. And so the customer experience is that they typed in black men's, black top hat men's, and they got shown your ad. They have no idea that the keyword that you bid on was top hat. Uh, th their experience is totally different than, than your experience here. And so all you know is that you got traffic to that keyword. But if you look at the search terms, you can see that you got traffic to that keyword because somebody searched on 
black top hat men's. Does oh, that make sense? Oh, I see. So, so the seller actually after the um, the traffic hits, the they'll get the search term information, but they bid on keywords. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this is uh, this is I think the most powerful part of our analytics and presses on. Yeah. Uh, you know, really breaking down where your search term volume is coming from is just the most important thing, period, for managing ads. Right. Uh, and it becomes very difficult. I mean, Amazon does have search term reports, but they're over a really broad time range. And uh, it's all aggregated together and it's, you don't get the breakdown that you want. And we have daily search term data and we can break it down like per campaign, per ad group. Uh, and so that that's really helpful for understanding what things are actually making you money. Are, are you able to get um, search term data for uh, the, the traffic that you're getting for the search terms and then the clicks and then I guess subsequently conversions as well? So the, um... Yeah, so um, let me let me share a different screen. Oh man, different screen. This is so good. This is the, this is the most high tech one. They've mostly just been conversations so far, which which I really enjoy. But like, it's it's nice to bring in some media. So I'll de I'll definitely encourage people to do this more. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Happy happy to be the first. Okay. Can you see that one? <laughs> I Let's can, see. but it's like a never ending. <laughs> it's just you. Okay. Uh, Let me share a different one. Oh, uh, they don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about this? Right, right. We're in presses on. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, we're just looking at a demo account now. Uh, we use Magic Supplies as our as our demo because we're presses on. Uh, <laughs> oh, I get it. So if you click over here to Search Term Explorer, yeah. Uh, these are all the search terms that our campaigns got exposure to, and so like we have like hat stuff up at the top here. Yeah. And uh, this is over a specific time range, November 7th to December 7th. Uh, and you can see, you know, Magic Hat got about 100,000 impressions, 857 clicks. And you can see the top level information, you know, spend, a cost conversion rate, cool. all that stuff. And this is the search term. This is what the customer searched on. So this is super important stuff. Wow. And the, the next, the, the really cool thing that makes this search term explorer uh, much easier to use than Amazon is we can see where that traffic is going. Mm -hmm. And so if we add in keywords here, you can see that for wool top hat, mm -hmm. exposure to that search term was in the wool top hat exact keyword bucket right. and also the phrase top hat bucket and to an auto campaign. And each of these performed a little bit differently and <clears throat> Like you can see, you know, the CPCs varied. So we're about a dollar in these manual campaigns, 86 cents in the, in the auto campaign. Right. And the top level, like overall was pretty good. Like we're happy with the 25% ACOS. That's all, and that's all three put C together, right? That's yeah, that's bit. all three put together, but you can see like where that's coming from. And the fact that it is split up between three, uh, I'm a really big fan of what I call search term isolation. Hmm. So if you can direct all traffic for one search term to one keyword, that makes things a lot easier to manage because then you only have one bid to manage instead of three hmm. or four or 10 or 15. Right, right. And you know, if I were to reduce the bid, so we have a dollar eighty bid on this phrase top at one. If I was to reduce that bid to say 25 cents, hmm then all of the traffic for here for this keyword would probably go over to this keyword. Hmm. And that, that makes things a little bit hard to optimize because now you, you are kind of competing against yourself. You know, Amazon will then give, you know, will top at more impressions and then you'll get more clicks there. And then you have to optimize that and you can kind of get into these bidding battles with yourself, right. not necessarily driving the price up, but just moving search term impressions around. Right. And so, you know, seeing where all of this is playing out and how it's playing out uh, is really easy to do with with our search term explorer. And I, it's definitely our most popular feature because it's it just makes it so easy to see what, how everything's happening. Oh, this is great. Um, 
Okay, and I guess so. So the last time I, I ran um, uh, Amazon Pay Per Click ads was several years ago. So so it seems like since then they've added um, uh, basically like Google's uh, framework. So so you have uh, exact and phrase, and you can also do negative. Um, yeah. So in oh, and you know, so in Color Central ads, you can do phrase broad exact. Uh, you can do negative exact and negative phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, negatives are definitely super important. Right. And I, I can get into that a little bit. Uh, negatives are like, you know, this one, if, you know, tiny top hat, you know, say <laughs> we don't sell tiny top hats, say we sell really big top hats, uh, you know, people are clicking on it, but they're not buying it. And so we suggest you make it negative and just like click negative and create two negative keywords. Oh, that's awesome. And so, so this is, uh, and then that go, sorry, go ahead. Th th this is synced up to your seller central. So when you take action here and make that a negative keyword that gets pushed to your yeah. campaigns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Nice job guys. This looks great. Thank you. <laughs> well, I said guys, but yeah, we... uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's you, but yeah, th no, this is great. Well, I mean, yeah, th so there are three of us, but yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, it, it really, like, I, I just can't believe that Amazon is so, like, the, the search term data that you get is not nearly as, as good as you want. Yeah. Like, you, the reports that they provide in Seller Central are not that good, yeah. and they take a ton of time to work with. Yeah. And so just having it simply displayed in a more consumable format is a really great way to see how you're performing across a bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. So back to presentation. So right. now we can see that, uh, you know, you have this broad keyword top. Uh, and if you bid 50 cents on this one keyword, yeah. that's, you, you know, you're bidding 50 cents on every search term that show that it can get shown for. Yeah. So you can't say like, okay, I want to bid 50 cents on top hat, but uh, 75 cents on black top hat and two cents on small top hat. If you have this one keyword and it's getting, show, getting shown for all of these search terms, the same bid applies. And so what we can do, let's see here. Okay, so yeah, like let's start with negatives. Um, if you specifically don't want to be shown for black top hat, uh, you can say, you know, negative exact black top hat, and then you won't get shown for that one anymore. So that's what we did with that small top hat or tiny top hat um, when we were looking at the software. And so that's a really good way to minimize how much money you spend on things that don't convert or don't convert well. Um, and then the next thing we can do <coughs> is make negative, oops, uh, make negative ones that do perform well. So say top hat performs really well. If you make that negative and then in a different ad group, you make that an exact keyword. Now you can control the bid on that specific search term. Uh, Does that it. make sense? Got it, got it, right. So you have a separate ad group with just top hat exact match in it. Um, yeah. And it's being made negative where? Like in, in all your other campaigns perhaps? Like a where it's a, it might be a yeah. broad keyword. So the, yeah, I mean, so you want to kind of take the transition slowly so that you make sure that you actually are getting impressions where you want to get those impressions. But at the end of the day, I think the the optimum uh, the optimum account would have all of that traffic going to one keyword. Right. And so if you have an exact match uh, keyword in an exact match ad group, um, that should be negative everywhere else. Yeah. Because you want all of that traffic to go specifically to this one search, this one keyword. Right, right. You'll see only that. You'll see exactly how it's doing. You can, you know, adjust bids, all that. So that, that's a good strategy. Yeah, yeah. And I think people, you know, it's there's been a lot of advice to like start up all keywords in all different match types and just see what sticks. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good way to explore stuff. But if you really want to get the optimum performance out of your, your campaigns, 
uh, being able to manage exact match uh, keywords with bids is really good. And then you can like, after, you know, after you've done some of this moving over to exact match stuff and negating, negativing everywhere else, now you're managing bids here on a smaller set of search terms that probably have more similar performance. Because say Top Hat and Black Top Hat had either really good or really bad performance mm. <clears throat> compared to the rest of the search terms in this group. Uh, managing the rest of these with a bid is going to be is going to be better because they're all going to need probably a closer, a more similar bid than than these other two. Right. And so managing those other two with exact match term uh, keywords uh, with bid is is good, and then you can manage this broad keyword with its own bid and then you have like very specific bids for these search terms right right so so it might look something like this like um, in this left hand panel here um, you'd probably run this first um, uh, with, with the, say the broad keyword top hat uh, you'd run it for you know X amount of time one week two weeks see what's working uh, your superstar keywords you can then make a negative um, in this campaign give them their own uh, Sorry, the terminology is probably wrong. Give them their own ad group um, with mm -hmm. top hat exact, so that you can moderate that bid uh, up or down depending on performance. Um, and you can just yeah. monitor it more closely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Yeah. No, that's this is really good because well, this is um, the essence of optimization essentially. Is it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because you you want to be bidding the right amount for each auction for each search term. And so this changes over time. This changes with the search term, obviously. Uh, and just you have to use the tools that Amazon provides you. Yeah. And so what they provide us is you know, the ability to start these keywords and negative keywords in ad groups and bid, on different key, bid differently on different keywords. And so you, if you have these two ad groups set up, you can, you can pretty easily move impressions to where you want them uh, okay. to go, to exactly which keyword you want to go. Very so instead of, you know, say you wanted to increase the bid to 75 cents on Top Hat, you couldn't do that in this broad ad group yeah. because then you would also increase the bid to 75 cents on men's Top Hat and small Top Hat and red Top Hat, which you might not want. Yeah. So moving it over to an exact ad group and then bidding specifically there and then negativing it in the broad uh, ad group that that really helps you isolate stuff. That's great. That's really good. I, th I think uh, yeah, that alone. If you're watching this, I, I don't think this is going to change. Um, <laughs> that's very useful, very instructive. <laughs> so if nothing else, just to do this. Um, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I mean, pretty much. Like if if you just go through, you know, I mean, Impress is always sort everything by spend because you want to make sure that you're spending your money properly. And so if you go through the first page, say like maybe the top 25 search terms, and you make sure that all of those are isolated and you're bidding the right amount on those, that's like 50% of your optimization right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 50%, okay. What are, what are we missing? Uh, I mean, really just continual optimization like you want to just keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that okay um let's let's see here let me if we are missing anything maybe it's just a continuation of that process well a lot of it's that but um it, you know moving them over is one thing making sure that you're bidding the right amount is another thing uh you know from that we could guess that say we wanted to go from 50 cents to 75 cents but you know you might find different performance, and you know you want to change that over time. Probably near Halloween, people are buying top hats, and so like you might want to, you know, change your bids for the month leading up to Halloween or something like that. Right, right, right. Okay. Very cool. Um, and then so one thing that is not complete, maybe not super clearly covered in that illustration there was using auto campaigns because auto campaigns you don't bid on a keyword you just give amazon a bid and they pick which search terms to bid on so it's all lumped under one keyword <clears throat> but you can still use negative uh keywords in auto campaigns oh, you can. Okay. um yeah so 
auto campaigns you can manage through uh, negatives and bid and budget. And so um, if you find stuff that you want to move over to an exact campaign or you find search terms that are simply not performing at all, those are great, great ones to make negative. Uh, over time, as you move out, like you know, if you're using your auto campaign for, for research and you're moving out these good search terms and you're putting them in this exact ad group, uh, your, your auto campaign performance is going to go down because now you've made these high performing search terms negative in your auto campaign. So now you're only bidding on kind of the long tail stuff. So as you do that, it's good to reduce your bid so that you, um, so you're not spending too much and like you're, you're getting, you know, probably the stuff that you're finding is going to be the lower bid stuff anyway, because you, I prefer starting high on auto campaigns. So you get exposure to the whole market and you can see, okay, this is kind of what I'm dealing with mm -hmm. and over time bringing it down. Right, right, right. Um, and then also managing your budget because at some point your auto campaign might just not be performing at the levels you want. So making sure that you're only spending like a dollar a day or maybe you pause it, uh, those are those are good steps. And so, you know, I've seen people get kind of attached like, oh, my auto campaign used to be performing so well. It's like, well, you just moved that performance over and now you have more control over that performance. That's great. You should be excited about that. And like, you know, maybe your auto campaign isn't working for you anymore and that's okay. We can just we can just lower the budget, lower the bid, and actually, uh, super hot tip that I don't see many people doing is using a uh, a low bid auto campaign. If you just start an auto campaign with all of your ads, uh, or at least all of all of the ads that are in like the similar kind of product line, like maybe variations, and then you start like a five cent bid or a ten cent bid, um, that can just be basically free money because uh, you don't have to do any optimization on it. Uh, you're not going to get a ton of traffic, but if you get a sale because you paid two cents for a click, that's going to be profitable. And it's a great way to just like kind of get this. I don't know. I don't know why Amazon has this ad inventory laying around, but like they'll sell it to you for two cents sometimes <laughs> and uh, you want to be there to buy it if yeah. you can. Okay, that's a, that's really interesting. I didn't I didn't know that um, cost per clicks could still be that low, but I but I guess um, yeah, it makes makes sense. I I, I want to uh, actually ask you a, a speculative question because you're you're sort of um, yeah. you know you, you're an expert in this field. Um, wh where do you see uh, uh, the ad platform going? Like, do you see any sort of top level trends, uh, things that are changing? It's obviously getting more sophisticated in terms of um, control. Mm -hmm. Still not where where you know it should be, which is which is why uh, why you guys are doing right. you know uh, so so um, you know do you, do you, do you see any you know uh, or any predictions for the next like couple years what people could expect out of out of the advertising platform? Yeah, totally. I have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, they're experimenting a lot with new kinds of advertising, so. Um, we mainly focus on sponsored products because that's the biggest chunk of the market yeah. and that's also the one that they have the best API for. Um, but we see movement with the API recently, so they're working on um, supporting uh, AMS advertising, which we just started supporting last month. So if you have a vendor account and you're using sponsored products, uh, you can use presses on to manage those those accounts. and. Um, that's a really great thing because AMS reporting was worse than Seller Central reporting. I bet so people was. didn't really know how to optimize their 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 ad campaigns. Yeah. So, so that's really cool that they're putting effort into supporting uh, expansion of their API. Um, we're also working with them to support headline search ads, uh, which they just released for Seller Central. Those have been kind of the 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 pride of AMS advertising and everybody was super excited to get those in Seller Central um, and now they're expanding API support to headline search ads what, which is super cool. Um, what what uh, what are those? Is that the banner um, below the search bar? Yeah. You get, oh, okay. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, the, like right at the top, you can pick like four images to put in there. You can put some copy in there, yeah. which is pretty cool. 
though you know you have no control over your creative right with uh with sponsored products it's just title pick main picture review count but with uh headline search ads you can pick which pictures and you can pick some text to put there right. super powerful okay okay oh that's gonna be interesting and so yeah i mean super interesting people are taking advantage of that and making uh you know getting really good cost per click and uh a cost through headline search ads for seller central nice. um hopefully they'll expand like product display ads to seller central as well hopefully they'll start supporting uh product display ads through their api um they just have so much amazon's really starting to get really creative i mean they're putting a lot of effort into expanding their ad ads on the on the platform so i'm I'm hopeful that that trend will continue. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're 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 pretty good at like rolling out stuff overnight. That's like <laughs> pretty considerable. So I'm excited. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, I guess maybe did you want to tell people where they could uh, you know get a hold of you, see more of your stuff, get the software? It looks great. I'm glad we got got a demo in. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks for letting me do that. Um, yeah, I mean, pressison.com, uh, like Presto, Amazon, like our, our goal is to really automate everything that you have to do with uh, PPC ads, because I don't think many people should be spending their time managing ads. They should be spending their time running their business. And so, you know, that's where we're going. And uh, so just go to pressison.com. It's it's free to sign up. Uh, you, super easy. We use login with Amazon. So all you have to do is... Um, basically log in to your Amazon account and then give us access to the API. And, you know, as soon as we get the data back from Amazon, you can start optimizing. Nice. All right. Awesome. Yeah, guys, definitely go check it out. Uh, you, you saw the software. That's serious stuff. It looks really good. Um, and yeah, uh, Ben, thanks a lot for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, Pat. <laughs>